the one original exponent of the free market economy and the revival in the Conservative Party. But he was also chain-smoking, blunt, and sometimes tactless. In fact, it often seemed that, as a government minister, he had no concept of public relations. However, he was a close ally of Margaret Thatcher, and on the 13th of July 1990, he told The Spectator that the European Economic Monetary Union proposal, the precursor to the European single currency, was little more than a German racket designed to take over the whole of Europe. He was the one and only Nicholas Ridley. Nicholas Ridley was born on the 17th of February 1929, the second son of the third Viscount Ridley. He was educated at Winchester, Eton and Balliol College, Oxford, and eventually graduated with a degree in engineering science. Following his national service, he became a civil engineer, but it wasn't long before the call of politics was heard. Ridley contested the rock-solid Northeastern Labour parliamentary constituency of Blythe in the 1951 general election for the Conservatives. Unsurprisingly, he didn't win. However, eight years later, in 1959, Ridley was returned as the Conservative MP for Cirencester and Tewkesbury. From the very start, he identified with those Conservatives critical of the Butskalite consensus, and in 1965 was one of just 15 Conservative members of Parliament, along with his future Thatcher Cabinet colleague John Biffin, to vote in uh, the Conservative leadership contest for Enoch Powell. When Prime Minister, Edward Heath abandoned the manifesto upon which he had been elected in 1970 by returning to a prices and incomes policy. Nicholas Ridley was one of the most vocal Conservative critics. In 1973, he co-founded the Selston Group to champion the cause of the free market within the Conservative Party. At the time, uh, that was regarded as the height of disloyalty. His launch speech was frankly stunning. Ridley started by saying that whenever something appeared to be imperfect to people in the country, they said that the government should do something about it. He said, thus has the government accumulated responsibility for half of our economic life by taking over the four great welfare services, health, education, social security and housing, 15 nationalised industries and a heterogeneous collection of companies and services. The evils of this are manifest. He spoke of how socialists itch to make it illegal to provide an alternative to state service, and he hinted that the next target for nationalisation would be private schools. Ridley went on to describe a new way of increasing the public sector through price control in a direct attack on the policies of Heath's government. He said, holding down a price by subsidy, whether from the public or the private purse, is one of the main engines of inflation. Ridley argued for tight monetary control in an era of profligate public spending. He concluded his speech with the words of Abraham Lincoln. You cannot bring about prosperity by discouraging thrift. You cannot strengthen the weak by weakening the strong. You cannot help the wage earner by pulling down the wage payer. You cannot further the brotherhood of man by encouraging class hatred. You cannot help the poor by destroying the rich. You cannot establish sound security on borrowed money. You cannot keep out of trouble by spending more money than you earn. You cannot build character and courage by taking away a man's initiative and independence. You cannot help men permanently by doing for them what they could and should be doing for themselves. Nicholas Ridley eventually entered government in May 1979 under Margaret Thatcher but his first position as Minister of State at the Foreign Office nearly terminated his political career altogether. Put simply, he believed that the military defence of the Falklands Islands was unfeasible on grounds of cost and met secretly in Geneva with his Argentine opposite number to agree the terms of leaseback of the islands. When news of these plans surfaced, he instantly became detested by the Falkland Islanders and condemned by members of his own party. Ridley proposed an education campaign to persuade the Falkland Islanders. He was very lucky to be shifted to the Treasury Department in 1981. He was much better suited there, as he was later at the Department of Transport, where he pushed through the deregulation of bus services. Following the 1987 general election, he was the Secretary of State for the Environment, who championed the highly controversial non-property-based uh, local tax known as the Community Charge. 
The idea was uh, for a radical flat tax, but it ended in political chaos as the tax bills of so many across the country increased. His last government portfolio, Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, arguably the one to which he was most suited, ended with his, his comments about the European project in The Spectator. Forced to resign, Margaret Thatcher actually ended up falling from office herself just four months later. Nicholas Ridley, who became Lord Ridley of Lidsdale, died on the 4th of March 1993. He was grumpy and he often lacked tact, uh, but he was one of the key supporters of the lady and a trailblazer for the free market. Margaret Thatcher said of him, free market economics was Nick's passion, and he had a longer and better pedigree in that respect than most Thatcherites, or indeed, may I add, myself. His first vote against the Conservative government was on bailing out the nationalised industries way back in 1961. To be right so early on is not to have seen the light, but to have lit it. High praise indeed.